Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. We have been working with the Young Invisibles to advocate for more college access. We believe in paving the way. Hi, everyone. So I'll introduce myself to start. My name is Jared Martino. My pronouns are he, him. Hello, everyone. My name is Clementina Jose. Uh, my pronouns are she, her. Hello, everyone. My name is Khadija Rashid. My pronouns are she, her. Hi, my name is Nazreen. My pronouns are she, her. So today we will be doing an icebreaker and then getting right into college access and what it means. After then we will, that we will discuss stats that Jared will share with us and a survey that we conducted. And then we will also talk about how we can increase college access and show you quotes from actual real students who have experienced the lack of college access and those who did not. And then we will present our call to action and have a little Q&A session and then close off with our social media toolkit. So one key component in ach achieving college access is being college ready. So college courses are like the main way one person can be ready for college. So I would like to ask you guys this question. Did you take any college credit courses in high school? There is a link in the chat, so please click on it and it will take you to the website. So I'll give you guys a few seconds to do that. Okay, so I think that's it for the answers. Um, oh, there's one more. <laughs> so as we can see from our own personal experiences, like a few of us have taken college credit courses and a few of us have not. So we know how it can benefit us and how it's like useful if we have college credit courses. So now we'll I'll pass the slides on to Khadija to explain. Thank you, Nazreen, for that. Um, just think, okay. Um, what does a lack of college access mean? It means little to no knowledge of college application and process, lacking college readiness, such as being prepared, not being prepared to take college level courses. These things usually tend to affect low income families and communities of color, which makes them more vulnerable to dropping out of college and hindering their pursuit of a higher education. I would like to uh, pass it to Jared to share some stat statistics that back up those claims. Thank you so much, Khadija. So here on our first graph, we can see that high schoolers attending college and their economic background 
we have a drop of 29% in enrollment, and that's attributed to the lack of college courses and counseling in high school. Uh, most of this is due to poor neighborhoods that the students of low-income families come from. So on the graph here on the left, you can see high-income students, and they're just above 75% for college enrollment, whereas uh, with low-income students, you're rounding out about 50%. So this was an interesting uh, statement that we found while looking into research for this. According to the College Board, AP students are more likely to enroll in college than students who did not take any AP courses in high school. This is a big signifier of college enrollment. So now we're going to look a little bit at some of the survey results. Uh, we created our own survey and shared it out to uh, current undergrad students, current graduate students, previous uh, undergraduate students, just a huge uh, net of uh, different college related individuals, whether or not they actually uh, graduated from their undergraduate program, the only expectation was these students were uh, to have enrolled in college at some point. Um, as we can see here on the graph on the left, uh, we can see that 96% of the students that responded did take advantage of college credit, college credit courses during their time in high school. Now that's pretty broad, whether that means they took AP courses, IB courses, college now, dual enrollment, uh, any type of college credit courses during their high school time. Now the graph on the right here shows just how helpful AP courses specifically were uh, in preparing the level of coursework for, uh, college, uh, for college students. So as we can see here, uh, number five is very helpful. Number one is not very helpful. And based on the survey, students found generally that these classes were helpful in preparing them for college course. Uh, it's a pretty interesting bell curve here, uh, but very few, if any, students said that they did not find AP courses to be helpful in their prep for college. Now, next up, we have some statistics on uh, early college schools and their benefits. So over here, uh, we see that uh, students enrolling in college, uh, there are 88% of students that were enrolled in early college students that ended up going on to enroll in college, compared to only 12% of the students that did not end up enrolling in college. Now, it's also interesting to note here that early colleges uh, cost about 3,800, so roughly $4,000 more per student than traditional high schools. But the estimated return here on that investment was $33,709, almost you know, 35,000. This is a huge increase in the investment of the cost of that high school and how uh, the money was spent versus how the income ended up coming in later on, depending on uh, the impact it had on these students' college. So this is a really interesting statistic to look at as well. So not only AP, uh, not our, only are AP courses a big signifier in college success, but also early college schools themselves. All right, so I'm gonna pass this over to Mary so that she can talk a little bit about college access. Hi, uh, my name is Mary. Um, we've been working on this uh, 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 campaign to um, to increase the awareness for like college access and stuff. And um, for this slide, I'm gonna talk about how to in how we're gonna improve and increase the college access. Um, we can increase the college access with better academic preparation through co uh, college credit opportunities such as AP and IB courses, CLEP exams, and the dual enrollment programs programs like College Now. More support for the first generation co uh, college student from the modulized community, communities, um, information discussions on aids and scholarship for students facing financial um, uh, challenges having a support system for students struggling with college adjustment and so on. Uh, on this slide, we can see the five um, ways high school student can earn um, college credit. Uh, the first way is the advanced placement classes, which is known as AP. Um, it's where um, students are rewarded or awarded um, with college credits if they successfully like complete um, 
complete a class on the AP exams and stuff. Um, international baccalaureate program, which is the program that prepares the student for college level coursework by allowing students to take courses from several areas of study and can receive college credit in return. The dual enrollment, which the students can take college classes that are taught by student professional professors on campus or online and most pass in order to receive college credit. Another way is a college level exam examination program, which um, the students can earn college credit for completing um, introduction or level courses by um, achieving satisfactory um, scores on subject specific tests. And the last one is the pre-college summer program, which the students can, which, which the students are given the chances to explore the challenges and the opportunities of the college experience during the summer and receive the college credits after successfully com completing uh, a program. <clears throat> um, this slide is how can college courses benefit students. Uh, it can benefit students by better equipped with skills for college level courses, save time and allow students to graduate early and save money by having a lesser courses to take and increasing the college readiness for students. Um, I can relate to this personally because um, when I went to high school, my high school, we didn't have much of AP courses to take. Um, I think there were only like five and but other schools have up to like 15 or 20 or even more, but we only have five. And I feel like that kind of like um that kind of like slowed my education level down because like it made me like, I mean, it kind of slowed the way that I um like the courses I could have taken in high school and not take in college, like make my um to get my degree faster. And um I only took two out of the five courses and um yeah, and I wish that I, my school could offer more um, AP courses so that students could be able to take them and not waste their time, basically like save their time while in college. Yeah, thank you. So hello again, everyone. Um, so I'm gonna be covering um, blog posts that actual people created. So this first blog post was saying, um, and this was from me, yours truly. Um, I said, if New York City contains over 500 public schools, why are there only 12 early college schools all throughout New York City? Furthermore, these early college schools are typically strategically located within affluent neighborhoods, which lessens the chance, which lessens the chances of low-income students and families accessing these schools. So we must do better as a society. So I personally, I did attend an early college school, one of the 12 early college schools within New York City, um, specifically York Early College Academy. And though I was very grateful for that experience. Um, ultimately, I believe that these opportunities, such as the opportunity that I was afforded, I think that other students should be afforded this opportunity as well. Um, York Early College Academy luckily was rooted in an impoverished neighborhood, but that is not usually the norm. Typically, most early college schools are put strategic or are strategically placed within Manhattan and other parts of the city, which requires that early college students must travel 45 minutes to an hour away from their neighborhoods. And I believe that it is important that we plant these early college schools and neighborhoods where students truly need the information and overall college access, because ultimately we shortchange low-income students when we do not prioritize their needs also, especially being that there are lower chances um, that first-generation and low-income students have mentors and proper college access opportunities opposed to their counterparts who may not be of color, who may have these opportunities right in their backyard. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so um, this is another anonymous, anonymous survey participant who said, having guidance counselors that understand the college process deeper than face value. My guidance counselor couldn't help me through the process other than this is your SAT score. So I personally relate to this a lot. I come from a public high school, like I graduated from it in Forest Hills. 
So we were a graduating class of like 700 to 800 students almost, and we had only two counselors. So it was not their fault. They couldn't give us like time and the experience to like help us through the college process. And I feel like this needs to be worked on. We have to um, give this big like public schools more counselors in order to help the students get the skills and like apply to their colleges. I agree, Nazreen. And now for this next blog post, um, which was written by another anonymous survey participant, they said it was definitely a leap, not a jump. I feel like in high school, I was always told college was going to be harder, but I was never actually told what to expect. I was never shown how to sign up for classes. I knew nothing about financial aid. It was really like I was teaching myself these aspects of college while also trying to do the schoolwork as well. Once again, I just wanted to emphasize that these are real people who are sharing their stories. Like this is real life people. Um, currently, the average student um, student to school counselor ratio is 370 students to one counselor within many New York City schools. And what also sucks is that counselors are there throughout the college application processes. But as soon as the season is over, students are essentially on their own. Now, it is typically not the fault of the counselors being that they are literally outnumbered um, in relation to students, which is more so the fault of the system. Nevertheless, this leaves students unprepared and anxiety filled when going into college. Next slide, please. So another survey participant said, the transition from high school to college hasn't been seamless, but it's been much easier because of my college credits and advisor. I'm fortunate enough to have the one-on-one -on -one support I need in college, but I don't feel that high school had prepared us mentally for the drastic life change. Once we passed the college application season, any support we had diminished and there wasn't any focus on succeeding in college or resources to fall back on. So I really agree with the participant about how college credits have been helpful because I personally transferred 16 college credits from high school and it allowed me to like lay, ba lay back on my college years, like in freshman year, I, I can like not take a few classes and graduate early, which is really helpful. And it equips you with skills that might be a like that can put mental pressure on you when you're in high school and already like sorry in college and you're already juggling with all those stuff so those skills really help you in the long run so so show your support for senate bill at s552a now i'm going to show you guys how to go to the side and show your support for this bill So once you go to nysenate.gov, you go to bills and laws, you search up the bills. For this one, it's S552A. And once you enter, it's the first bill on search. So this bill will help, um, will help fund programs such as College Now and other college credit programs that help the students get the college credits they need in order to help them in their college journey. So right on, on exactly on your right, you see, do you support this bill, A, nay? And once you complete this form, I'll just do this as an example. And once you do this, you're gonna get a confirmation link in your email. And once you do that, it shows you support this bill. So let's get back to the slides. Make your voice count. I'll just give it back to Clementina. Yes, so ultimately our findings and several research articles provide strong evidence for the positive impact of early colleges, early college schools, on students. Early college students 
had a greater opportunity than their peers to enroll in and actually graduate from college. Early college, um, also, the, they also appear to be on a different academic trajectory, um, being that with early college students, they earn college degrees and enrolled in four-year institutions at higher rates than in comparison to other students. In addition, early colleges appear to mitigate the traditional educational attainment gaps between advantaged and disadvantaged students. To specifically cite statistics, a 2009 study found that in early college schools, students perform better on state tests in ELA and mathematics than their peers in traditional high schools in their local districts. And alumni of early colleges early college schools stated that they generally felt um, that their schools had effectively prepared them to manage their time and to be successful in rigorous classes. Also being an early college alumni myself, I personally finished undergrad at 19 and that shaved off literally two years of undergrad for me. And I literally got to go straight into graduate school, which was very, very helpful for both me and my family. But aside from that, um, I, as well as many of my classmates, we got to save once again, like a boatload of money. And we had general awareness and understanding of college systems. We got to network with professors and we got to get a gist of basically the college life pretty early, which was a great advantage to all of us. Nevertheless, even if we do not create a bunch of early college high schools right now, we can make a step in the right direction by increasing college now programs um, credit offerings. So the current amount um, that a high school student can obtain from a college now program is between 12 to 16 credits. But if students complete those, we should still offer them more opportunities um, to get more credits in hopes of them lightening their prospective college load, saving money and increasing their chances of graduating early. So yes, that is my TED talk. Does anybody have any burning questions? Anything that came to mind? Does anybody want to just share any personal experiences? Don't be shy, everyone. Don't be shy. I'm seeing somebody in the chat. Um, I'm seeing that Christian stated, wow, 12 to 16 credits. That's amazing. I would have loved this during my time in high school. Another thing that I've personally found is that even though the College Now program is kind of out there, it still isn't fully. There's not enough um, information and it's not publicized enough to um especially to students who are in like impoverished neighborhoods or specifically to low income students, which makes it harder for people like that to actually participate in these programs. Also, you guys can definitely drop um, questions within the Q&A chat also, if you guys don't wanna share out loud. We do have an anonymous attendee who asked a question. Is there any new school schools going to be enrolled into this College Now program this year? This 12, I believe it's referring to the 12 schools that are college now, schools, uh, college readiness. Yes. From my knowledge, I don't believe that there are new schools that are going to be enrolled into the college now program, or I don't believe that there are like current plans to create any early college schools, at least from my knowledge currently, which is definitely why we're trying to push um, that more schools actually advocate and actually make um, the information known to students about these college now programs because many schools they do have the information but there are also a lot of barriers for students to even be able to get into the college now program or to be able to actually I shouldn't say to get in but to actually participate in the program. I believe that's very similar to a lot of AP classes um, in uh, the surveys we also heard back from a lot of students about AP classes and not having as much access to them and even in school like not being able to take full advantage of not being able to take all those classes. There's another uh, question in the chat that was uh, can current public schools take into into this college now program. So from my knowledge public schools literally 
like many public schools are made aware of the college now, now program so basically the answer is yes um public schools are able to take part in this college now program it just sucks that like once again it's just not publicized enough because even me when I was in high school luckily I did stay before I did go to an early college high school but many of my friends or like other counterparts who did go to other public schools who did have the opportunity to be able to take part in the college now program they didn't hear about the college now program until they were about to graduate so it was already too late to be able to actually take part in these programs okay um there's another question um does college now lack funding to expand um how can we advocate to help increase funding to expand college now I can answer this question too. I'm gonna stop talking in a second. So it's okay. Um but, <laughs> so it's okay. <laughs> but honestly, from my knowledge, I don't really think or actually I should say to offer college now, it is relatively expensive. Um, and one of from one of the statistics that I believe Jared shared earlier, um, just even pertaining to early college high schools, I think. From the statistic, it said it costs thirty eight hundred dollars to be able to fund a student to be able to even take part in like early college programs. So being that that's relatively expensive for many public schools, like it's kind of hard for them to actually afford that and to allow all students to take part in the program. So in one way, I guess it can make sense why they don't publicize the program, because it's really, really hard to be able to fund each and every um, public school student to participate. Thank you for that. Um, there's another question. Does SUNY have uh, SUNY colleges have college now, and should they? So I wouldn't mind taking this one. Um, so College Now is a CUNY specific program. It's only offered through CUNY schools. Some SUNY schools do offer similar programs, not specifically titled College Now. Uh, these programs are also extremely limited. Uh, most of the time, these programs are only offered for classes that don't have equivalent AP or IB courses. Uh, and just reflecting back on the survey that we spoke about earlier, a lot of the students who identified as uh, having their high school experience outside of the five boroughs mentioned that they were only really offered AP or IB courses. Dual enrollment courses were really not offered um, or were not something that students were regularly able to take advantage of. So to answer your question, no college now is not offered by SUNY. There are similar programs uh, and they absolutely should be expanded uh, and fully funded. Okay, thank you guys for that. I just um, want to something, sorry. So add on, on the previous question about how can we advocate for this issue? I feel like we should um let the um the the college um prof uh prof uh what do you call it the co college officials and like the Senate and the Congress know that um this um college access has more benefit, especially the AP courses and the dual enrollment, because I know that some colleges mostly some colleges offer them, but they don't offer like enough courses, you know, and there should be enough courses because like um kid children, high school students are, you know, the future of the um, future of America, you know, they're not um, go to college and run for state senate and office and all that stuff. So I feel like we should start now preparing them to like because in uh, personally, when I was in high school, I wish that I know how college classes would be and so that I could be more prepared and know what I'm getting getting into when I come to college because I never had that. And now I'm kind of like because i um, struggling a little bit to keep up with all the students that already had um, the AP courses and already had like already had in mind what the um, college is going to be. So right now I kind of de depend on my older sister that already went to college and I ask her for like advice like oh how do I um sign up for classes how do I do this in college how do I do this cuz you know it's my first time and I know like every high school student it's going to be their first time. So I feel like we should advocate um uh, more for this and cuz you know kids Without kids, there's no future, you know. So I feel like we should advocate for more of this and let people know there's more benefits 
because I know like the of college officials are going to be thinking about money. Oh, we don't have the funding and stuff like that. But I feel like we should, inv uh, they should invest more into this because, you know, it's always good to be prepared. You know, it it's never good to do stuff at last minute and stuff like that. So yes, it's, it has more beneficial than bad stuff. So yeah. Um, I definitely agree. I feel like it's very important because if we talk about like going back to what Mary was saying, like we talk about children are the future and we talk about like how invested we are with closing gaps and, you know, finding ways to like bring up other opportunities to low income students or students who come from underprivileged neighborhoods but if we really are invested and if we really do care we need to take necessary action and the proper steps forward to be able to help students. Yeah, thank you everyone for answering these questions. If there's any more questions, feel free to write them in the chat. We will be responding to them. Uh, and yeah, I would like to show you guys the social media toolkit now that we have put together for you guys. Okay, so social media toolkit, we have used the hashtag pave the way because we're basically paving the way to, for more access to college now opportunities. Um, our primary target would be the chancellor who of the DOE. We believe that he can definitely help implement these in, these policies within public high schools. And he would, and then the secondary targets are the chief of student pa uh, pathways and the first deputy ch chancellor, as well as the chief st uh, strategy officer. And we've um, put their Twitter ads there. So feel free to take a screenshot of this and definitely add them when you tweet. Um, we have suggested tweets for you guys as well. So you guys can kind of copy and paste this and tag those people when you do so. Um, and uh, yeah, like feel free to at Young Invisible as well as um, pave the way, uh, hashtag pave the way. So, yeah, feel free to share your stories on why you think CUNY's um, should stay on, should um, continue doing this and expanding their programs. So, um, okay. I have just dropped the link for um, the social media toolkit. So feel free to access that and have total access to this and feel free to share it around. Um, yeah, thank you all for your time and um, yeah, thank you for coming up, showing up. Yes, thank you.